I'm going to continue my list of edible mushrooms that I can collect and use for food without fear of being poisoned. Mushrooms can be easily identified and mushrooms that don't have any dangerous poisonous lookalikes. Please watch our first video and learn more about the six important steps to take whenever foraging for wild mushrooms to avoid poisoning yourself and just to stay safe. And the most desirable mushroom and very hard to find is the hen of the woods or maitake mushroom. It is an edible polypore with many medicinal properties. I would recommend for you to read some more information about this amazing mushroom. It is really, really worth your time. There are no lookalikes that are toxic, and I would never mistake identifying this particular mushroom. I can walk 15 to 20 kilometers through the forest and find only one mushroom, or none. Hen of the Woods is actually very uncommon in Ontario, despite the fact that we have a lot of oak trees. And this mushroom likes to grow on oak trees, as it is a mild parasite of the oak tree. It gets its nutrients from the roots of hardwood trees. Hen of the Woods is very easy to identify. The fruit body is up to 60 centimeters with many laterally attached caps on the highly branched thickened stem. Each cap is around seven centimeters wide. It's gray or grayish brown, fine or velvety. Flesh is white, pores are cream. The spore print is also white. It tastes nutty and has a very pleasant smell. There are many different recipes in which you can cook this mushroom. You can dry or freeze it for later use. You can even eat it raw in small quantities. The next one is chicken of the woods or sulfur shelf. It's also a polypore and the sphax makes the species unique and very easy to identify. This mushroom grows on living or dead hardwood. Chicken of the woods have bright yellow sulfur pores and cap margins. Cap surface zoned coral orange yellow with many overlapping fleshy fan shaped caps. The surface of the cap is finely wrinkled and suede-like to the touch. Pores and tubes are bright sulfur yellow. Spore print is white. The mushroom flesh has a lemony taste with only the texture being chicken-like. Many people like this wild polypore for food. It is recommended to avoid alcohol when eating this mushroom and it's better to leave it alone if found on black locust or conifer because sometimes in some people it can cause vomiting. Although maple, oak, or beech, there seems to be no problem. Chicken of the woods is more common and easy to find and collect. So I personally don't know any toxic polypore mushrooms at all. To me, it seems like all polypore mushrooms in North America are either edible or medicinal or both. If you know any poisonous polypore mushrooms, please let me know in the comments. But this next edible polypore is birch polypore. It is a medicinal mushroom and it can be eaten mostly when young. At the young stage, they have a very soft flesh with a slightly acidic taste and slowly becomes a bit bitter. Older specimens have spongy, firm flesh with a strong, bitter taste, and it's good for making tea mostly. It is definitely worth to read about other medicinal properties of this mushroom on the internet. Birch polypore is a quite common parasite of the birch tree with only one problem. They always grow very high up and very out of reach, feeding on living trees and the one way that I can collect them is from fallen dead branches or from killed or chopped down birch trees. An interesting fact was that it was once found on the body of Otzi, which was a 5,300 year old mummy, which was found preserved in ice in the Italian Alps. Amongst his kit, Otzi carried two strips of hide onto which had been threaded pieces of birch polypore, as he was later found at the autopsy to be infected with intestinal parasites against which the birch polypore was active. It's another desirable mushroom, but not very common and is very hard to find. It's called Ganoderma tsugi, or hemlock varnish shelf. It's closely related to species to reishi mushrooms, or a group of mushrooms called Mushrooms of Immortality. Ganoderma tsugi is a saprophytic mushroom, grows mostly on Canadian hemlock or other conifers. We have a detailed video on our channel about this medicinal polypore, 
So please watch if you feel like you want to learn more useful information about this mushroom's biology, its habitat, and where to find it. The link is in the description. To preserve birch polypore and Gonoderma mushrooms, I slice them and dry them in the oven or in a hot and dry room. The next very common and very easy to identify edible mushroom is the puffball. They can be scattered or clustered in large groups on decaying wood or wood debris in mixed or conifer forests. To identify them, I just have to cut them open. There must be no gills. I can make a mistake if I accidentally grab a very young mushroom belonging to the Amanita family, and that mistake is very dangerous. For that reason, I never cook puffball mushrooms before I cut them in half to make sure that there are no gills at all. It is a true gastromycete, or stomach fungi, since they produce and release their spores inside the sac-like structure within the fruit body, the stomach, before the spores are exposed to air or water. There are two very common species that I can find in our Canadian forest, pear-shaped puffballs and gem-studded puffballs. They are a choice edible when pure white throughout. But if discoloration begins, it is not recommended for the table. If I see them to be green inside, that means I found them a week too late. I never take any puffballs home if they aren't pure white inside. If I find a puffball with black gleba, or very rough, cracked skin, kind of looking like pig skin, in that case, it is the pig skin poison puffball. It is inedible and mildly poisonous. Ingestion probably causes gastric disturbances in some individuals, especially if eaten in large quantities. It is a beautiful mycorrhizal mushroom, but better be left alone. So as I mentioned in the first part of this video, I am generally trying to avoid many, even edible, gilled mushrooms. Because specifically with gilled mushrooms, you're most likely to make a dangerous mistake. But in my opinion, there are very few special and delicious mushrooms that I can't resist the temptation to collect them for food. Also, they have unique characteristics that make it possible to tell the difference without fear of making a mistake. I present to you my favorite golden American chanterelle. This mushroom does have lookalikes, but fortunately, although they are poisonous, none of them are deadly poisonous. For example, the false chanterelle is even identified as edible in some field guides. I can tell chanterelle from many other mushrooms simply by its smell. It has an unusual fruity aroma and anyone with a good sense of smell can definitely tell and they would never forget it. The aroma is a mixture of apricot, carrot, and peach or orange. I just gently squeeze the mushroom in my hand and then smell to enjoy this unusual scent. The jack-o'-lantern bioluminescent mushroom is sometimes confused with true chanterelles, especially when it appears to be growing terrestrially rather than from wood. However, chanterelles rarely grow in dense clusters and feature false gills, while the jack-o'-lantern is usually clustered and can be distinguished from true chanterelle by their well-developed unforked gills. It's a fact that true chanterelles don't have true gills, like their lookalikes, but instead have false gills kind of look like cross-veined, rounded folds. Additionally, the color can also help you distinguish. True chanterelle is a uniform egg yellow, while the false chanterelle is more orange in hue and has like a gradient with a darker center. The true chanterelle's folds are typically more wrinkled or rounded and randomly forked. Cap of the true chanterelle is wavy, broadly sinking. The spores of true chanterelle also look different. They are oblong ellipsoid, 8 to 11 micrometers larger and different looking than the spores of lookalike mushrooms. I always check the spores under a microscope. Another highly prized edible chanterelle is black chanterelle or black trumpet. It is vase shaped. It has a black cap without gills on a barely wrinkled surface. Bluish gray or later salmon buff color. The stem is very short or absent. I can cook a lot of delicious dishes with this mushroom. 
as they are famous for their flavor and mild taste. I can dry them and crumble them to use them as a component with scrambled eggs or soup. Black chanterelle is not easy to find. It is not a really common mushroom, but if you find them in one spot, you are very likely to find them again in that same spot. This mycorrhizal mushroom can grow in very large colonies. If I'm lucky enough to find them at the right time, I can collect a few pounds at once from one spot. And finally, I want to share what kind of true guild mushrooms I prefer to collect. Or because they are oyster mushrooms, or Pleurotus populinus, Pleurotus austriatus, and Pleurotus pulmonarius. All three are morphologically similar, and all are reported to be edible. Unlike Pleurotus austriatus, which fruits in autumn and winter, Pleurotus populinus fruits in late spring and summer. The fruit bodies have oyster shell-shaped to fan-shaped caps that are 4 to 19 centimeters broad wide. The cap margin is initially rolled inward and becomes finely scalloped in age. The color ranges from ivory white to ash gray. The gills are decurrent, running a short ways down the stipe. The stems are short or absent, eccentric or lateral. The fun-shaped cap is attached to substrate at the side of the cap or from the lateral stem, pleurotoid. All of them grow on hardwood. The odor is pleasant, the taste is mild. They're easy to find and identify. Oyster mushrooms, pleurotus, is a genus of gilled mushrooms which includes one of the most widely eaten mushrooms. The species of Pleurotus may be called oyster or tree mushrooms and are some of the most commonly cultivated edible mushrooms in the world. I can easily find them in the forest, especially in early spring or late fall when the trees are naked and I can spot a cluster of this delicacy from far away. I can collect them in large numbers. They are quite good to be salted or marinated. Together with Pleurotus mushrooms, I can find sometimes a cluster of another edible tree mushroom. Hypsizigus tessulatus. It's a bouquet-like cluster of this medical mushroom that can be found on sugar maple trees or poplar or beech. From far away, they resemble oyster mushrooms, but with a closer look, I can tell the difference right away. They have a thick central stem that's enlarged at the bottom. Spores under the microscope are different. They're almost glabrous. They taste a bit bitter and I can only take them home if I have room in my fridge as they're not as tasty as oyster mushrooms and they do need to be cooked properly. But some sources claim that this mushroom does have medicinal properties and are also produced commercially in some countries. And at the end of my list, I left a very easy to identify Lactarius deliciosus. Before I saw this mushroom in nature, I was just reading about them. I recognized them right away because the orange latex milky or saffron milk cap has features that can be very easily recognized. It is another gilled mushroom and I'm always happy to bring them home for food. Medium to large sized orange mushrooms that produce an orange latex that slowly turns green after injury. They grow in cold, wet carnivorous forests. The cap is convex and sunken over the center. The stem is equal hollow and orange on the inside, and the same color as the cap. Spores are very different under the microscope with amyloid ornamentation. The taste is mild, peppery when young, and together with Lactarius deliciosus, I can find another related species, Lactarius thainos. It looks very similar to the first one. Even the spores under the microscope look almost the same, with only one difference. Lactarius thainos becomes red or brown, but not green when brushed or injured. They're also very good edible mushrooms. I know that there are many good edible mushrooms that I can also find in the forest, and many of them have poisonous deadly lookalikes. For example, honey mushrooms can be confused with deadly gallerina. Or sometimes young Rosola claroflava can be easily confused with young deathcap or amanita phylloids. Some guild mushrooms belong to the little brown mushrooms group and have a lot of poisonous species among them that are better to avoid and since they are very hard to identify. 
I prefer not to touch these at all and not to bring them to my table to avoid poisoning. And I wish to all of my fellow mycophagists lucky foraging.